Subscribe! Hit that like button. Together we can fund these headless children. Buy them some heads. <laughs>
not having too much equipment but then again everything that's in here uh, I use weekly so it's very important to have everything that I have in here and just have some extra CHF for the German vehicles power steering fluid extra can of brake clean and I got a few over here I got wheel bearing grease back and bearings doing some brake jobs dot three a couple cans of brake clean free all free all is in my opinion the best uh, uh, better than PB Blaster or WD-40 for loosening rusty nuts and nuts. Uh, can of black spray paint. It's always a good idea to cover up some rust to make things look a little bit better. Uh, I do have some other adhesives in here. Plasti Weld uh, Clear Epoxy for the last project that I did. Uh, Caliper grease for brakes, Loctite, Permatex, just any kind will do. You can get these little containers of it for free in certain different jobs. Uh, Threadlocker red, I don't know, I just whichever one, I just use red. Uh, I got blue RTV, I never use that. I got this black RTV from Felpro, came in a kit, I don't use that. Ultra black. Uh, that's the one I use. The right stuff, Permatex. I'll go over that in a second. Some exhaust gasket, exhaust system gasket sealer. Uh, this is just liquid glass, uh, sodium silicate. It is very handy, but not the proper fix, but you can fix some small holes with that. And more black. Apparently I don't use any of this black crap. Uh, I don't use gray, that's the one thing. This one's black. I don't use the gray RTV anymore. Um, I've had too many uh, transmission pan gaskets leak again, and some of the interior things on transmissions leak. Uh, the only one I'm ever going to use again now is going to be this, the right stuff, one minute gasket. Um, I have never had a problem with this. Rear differentials, valve cover gaskets, which you shouldn't be using this on. You should do it right. And oil pan gaskets, uh, a lot of the uh, factory gaskets is a sealant of some sort and they want $80 for the stuff uh, to seal up the oil pan gaskets. Uh, this is about $27. Oh God. Plastic X. This is for cleaning headlights and other plastics. It works really good but you should buy the kit that comes with the headlight sealer because it's going to turn yellow again after a month or two but it works when you got a customer that's got some really bad headlights just to you know make it a little bit safer for them. The propane torch. I need to get one with map gas, but we got the propane torch dead in here. Heating up bolts, melting things, getting bumpers, uh, dents out of bumpers and such. Very handy. I have some engine assembly lube. I haven't built a motor in a while. Obviously, there's just water in this. I haven't built a motor in a while, but definitely good if you need to replace bearings and whatnot. And always keep uh, some LA is totally awesome with you. Uh, this is good for cleaning white interior. If you happen to track in some grease, uh, white paint. And you get that the grease on the white paint that just does not come off. This will get it off every time. It saved saved me more than enough times. Uh, reload the cart over here and uh, we'll go through the rest of these tools. <clears throat> All right now I'm gonna put these back in here in some type of organized manner. Uh, we'll start in the corner here. Uh, so another tool that you want to have is the uh, Torx bits. You want a good set short and long Torx bits. You want a different size set up to 55 T55s. Uh, down to, I do believe they go down to, the 10. If you need anything smaller than that, you can get one of the little screwdrivers, like a sunglass screwdriver, but you really shouldn't need anything smaller than that. Um, so Torx bits will work on most Allen heads. You just got to be real careful not to strip your tool. 
and not to strip the Allen head. Um, summer security bit, I don't have those. You can get a set of security bits too, or you can sometimes just break the center out of the security bit uh, if you're careful enough. Those guys go there. That one gets used on a daily basis, and unfortunately I lost the T30. That's the most common used size, I believe. But if you do start to round something off, or there's always that one case that it's an off size, it's a good idea to have a good set of Allen keys. As rusty as they may be, they'll save you. Uh, other types of Allens, you got some longer, I think you got 40 to 55. Uh, these ones specifically are for getting in uh, to the hex head uh, head bolts. Some Hondas and Toyotas, I believe. Uh, these guys are for Volkswagen and Audi. You need a good set of these uh, 12 points. Um, there's a lot of things that you can't do on a lot of Audis and Volkswagens without these seat belt bolts and a lot of the bolts in the engine. Um, BMW, it's just nice to have those. Speaking of BMW, the E bits. These are the backwards Torx heads. I don't use those very often, uh, mostly on BMWs, I believe, but it's a good idea to have a full set of these. Uh, the punches that you saw me using in that last video, uh, to pull the bearing out of that, the race out of that bearing assembly. Uh, you want a good set of punches, chisels. You want a good set of chisels too for getting hub assemblies off and cleaning gasket surfaces. Uh, I haven't cleaned these up in a while, but they worked great when I needed them. Screwdrivers, mm, have a couple of backup screwdrivers and definitely a short set. You can just buy a stubby set like this or you can buy one of those S-shaped ones. Uh, you can get a small, small uh, quarter inch driver or a hex driver uh, ratchet uh, with some stubby uh, style screwdriver attachments uh, like these ones. Uh, come in really handy for getting on the dashboard, getting those screws out of the back of the dash and such. Always keep those with you. I got a uh, tire plug kit. Yeah, it's beat up, but if I get a hole in my tire, I'm putting a plug in. If I need to get somebody off the side of the road with a nail in their tire, that's what I'm using. At least get them to Les Schwab. Don't have to have a car towed. You know, that's a couple hundred dollars right there. Oh, vice grips. Now, I, I don't like these very much, but when you're doing a brake caliper and that slide pin just will not stop spinning. Uh, I've seen Scotty Kilner using a set of vice grips on a set. Uh, come in handy, closing off hoses. Uh, I should get a set of uh, proper uh, hose pliers. They got a softer edge on them, but definitely handy when you need it. Um, if you're real careful, put a rag in there and you can hold the timing belt on because it, it always wants to slip off on one side on you. You can lock the timing belt down with that, hold it in place. Some brushes. You want to get a good set of brushes. This is not a good set of brushes. Update your brushes regularly. Uh, some Scotch-Brite. Cleaning up some surfaces. Again, these are hammered, but I got more in the other box. And some sandpaper. I always got to clean something off. Uh, Half-inch tools. So this is a Ford socket for a Ford axle. Uh, I think I literally have used it once. Oh, nope, I'll take that back. I used it to pound in that uh, bearing race on that E450. Uh, a couple times I think I've used it as a press. Um, just a miscellaneous assortment of half-inch sockets, 36 down to 27. Probably a decent idea. Uh, I think it was a Toyota Sienna. I used this on the filter socket. Uh, some of those things are made out of aluminum and plastic. You might want to get a set of filter sockets. Uh, sometimes you just cannot reach it. I've had to use that chain wrench a few times to get a filter off. Um, sometimes I've had to use the oil filter pliers 
Uh, you take the risk of cracking the plastic housing, just not a great idea. You want to get yourself a set of those if you have room. That's seven mil, seven eighths for the uh, oxygen sensor. Uh, this one comes in real handy when you don't have access and you need to get down into a uh, exhaust manifold shield or any other recessed area. Uh, very adaptable, very handy for getting oxygen sensors off. And this one looks like an oxygen sensor socket, but this is actually to hold the crankshaft fully on a, on a Honda. It's called a Stinger, and that way you can get the, the 19 mil down in the center there and hold this in place. The other option you have is to get a really heavy 19 millimeter socket with an impact gun and the weight of the socket should knock it loose. Uh, even in this case, I, I, I've tried this, it's worked a couple times for me, but most of the time I, I'll end up just putting the, the breaker bar on a socket and using the starter, and running the risk of breaking something. So far so good. Get yourself a good half inch breaker bar. Uh, I'd prefer something that has an attachment here uh, so that you can build it up, but if you got a cheater bar, you should be okay. That guy resides there. Um, that's the one thing I like about this 3 8 ratchet, is that you can build it up to whatever size you need, uh, which is really helpful when you're doing uh, serpentine belts. Get way down in there, or if you just need the leverage to break something loose. And then you can pull it off and work in a tight area. Half inch ratchet, half inch extensions of numerous sizes. Going to need those all when you're going in to get a bell housing bolt off the top of a transmission. I don't know what I used this one for. I used it once, 17 mil kept it because I may work on a car like that again. Now this rusty bearing looking thing is almost just that. It's a bearing to reset. This is for the lug nut. This is to reset the lug, st lug studs. So when you get a broken lug stud on a hub assembly, uh, if you can weasel one back in and get the splines back in, to set this on there so that you don't twist it while you're hammering it in and it pulls the, the lug stud in from the back, setting it properly. Uh, I've used that a few times. Uh, three eighths knuckle. Mm, I'm sorry, half inch knuckle. More half inch. So here's a, another Ford axle nut tool. 32, 34. Nut splitter. I think I've broken about two nuts with this. It was just one of those situations where it just had to have something different. It just wasn't working. Uh, let's see if we even tried to drill out a lock pin on this because it wasn't quite working right. Oh, that's right. It started twisting on me, so I had to I had to put something in there. I ended up busting off a tap inside there to use it as a guide, keep it straight. But you know, it worked once. That's it saved me on that one job. That was its purpose. I think I just got, now yeah, there's another one, 15 mil, 14 mil, and 27, these guys, all right, these sockets right here are the most common lug nut locks that you're going to find, I don't know how that went, these are the most common lug nut locks that you're going to find, uh, I'm not exactly what size they are. There's two sizes. There's six blind. And they're centered. They're not offset or anything like that, but these are the, the ones that all the kids have on their Civics. These are the ones you'll need. And you can carry a whole set of locking lug nut tools if you want to, but most of the time the customer will have them with it in the car, in the glove box, in the console, or in the trunk with the spare tire, or where the spare tire would be. Um, Always make sure before you start on a brake job or whatnot 
but before the customer leaves you the keys and runs off that you do in fact have the locking lug nut tool uh, otherwise the job's over before it began daily tools some things to have 3 8 ratchet quarter inch extensions magnets definitely need a good set of magnets and uh, in there I have a claw tool for retrieving your heavier tools when they fall down onto the skid plate and you just can't get there smaller screwdriver body clip tool you can use that in conjunction with a uh, flathead get a little bit more leverage prying some of those body clips off so you don't break them all and have to go replacing them uh, Phillips and flathead standard screwdrivers standard extensions for the 3 8 wire cutters I don't ever use I always use these as wire cutters and I always use these to crimp my uh, butt splice connectors and all my electrical connectors and uh, my go-to Irwin pliers that's the daily got a full set of 3 8 short sockets quarter inch ratchet all the adapters you need quarter to 3 8 3 8 to quarter 3 8 to half half to 3 8 another knuckle spark plug sockets 3 8 5 8 or 13 16 5 8 and the other spark plug socket that you're going to need will be a 14 deep that's for uh, pretty much Fords there's a couple other cars that use 14 full set of 3 8 deep I got a 10 mil and a 3 8 socket I don't work on a lot of America or uh, older American cars most of the metric sizes will transfer over but when stuff starts to strip you're gonna need a, a nice it's got some teeth in it for fixing stripped bolts I got some smaller sockets for fixing stripped bolts short extensions knuckle and a full set of deep and shallow quarter inch and this guy this is a gator uh, had a situation where I had to grind the side of a bolt off it was missing half of the head and this thing still got the bolt out for me on a brake caliper um, you know I think Scotty Kilmer didn't like this tool I can't remember what show I was watching they said this thing's a joke um, but you know just it doesn't take up much real estate in here and that one time that you're gonna need it that's the one time that you wish you had it so that's it for that section the last section is this box let me reset and we'll look at this all right this is the uh, the last amount of tools that I have in this section of the truck right here uh, it is a mess and that's why it has a lid on it so let's just go through these real quick got an impact screwdriver for getting the uh, screws out of uh, drum brakes for taking the the drums off um, there's a few other situations where you're going to need to hammer off a screw that goes in there retrieval tool when a magnet don't work some wire ties different sizes for holding on whatever it may be that you need to hold on I've, I got some holding my fan onto my radiator right now uh, handsaw a couple of different blades uh, cutting plastics uh, I got a uh, electric sawzall in the back but I also have a, a hacksaw but this one's for more like cutting plastic and things like that if you need to modify something follow it up with some of that plastic bonder adhesive the hose clamp pliers if you need these to get a spring clamp off do not replace the spring clamp those things suck that goes in there uh, you haven't seen a torque wrench yet I have a electronic torque wrench it's adjustable uh, it's not an angle gauge but it is good for setting head bolt torque you only need it for a minute then you go back to the the angles uh, setting angles I've used this one a lot it's about time for a new one Usually only you got to do a 90 or something like that, so I've moved some lines in there still. We're still good for 90 degrees. A uh, wrecking knife. When you just got a hammer on some rubber, sawing on it won't work. 
brake caliper tool, so I was talking about earlier, instead of a, a C-clamp, uh, buy yourself one of these. Uh, this one is, I've been, I've been using this for two years now, obviously. Uh, it's going to save you hours of trying to push back the, uh, the caliper. And you can use it in conjunction. Um, I do have the square tool for rotating the rear calipers. Uh, while you push them in, you rotate them at the same time. Uh, this will double up if you pull this cup off. You got a, a solid bolt here that you can push out. And as you're pushing it out, you can grab it with some pliers and twist it while you're pushing. Uh, you know, in a bind, it'll work. Files. Make sure you have yourself a nice set of sharp files. It looks rusty, it works really well. Sharpening stone from a knife. Different files. I have a lot of small files in here too. Um, you know, when they go, when they start getting dull, just throw them away, move on. Sometimes you gotta replace some tools. Uh, this is what I use for a straight edge. It is not a straight edge, but it is straight. And I believe I tested it on some flat surfaces at less than a thousandth of an inch. And most of the time you have two thousandths tolerance. Uh, so it's not the best straight edge, but the head gaskets that I have done with this have been going for over a year now. I keep in contact with the owners and they have no issues. So, I'm not worried about it. Timing light. Um, I have to make a video about how to use a timing light because a lot of these vehicles now are, are sensor driven and they just don't have uh, the need for adjustable timing. People don't have distributors. So, uh, I do work on some older vehicles. Even this truck here has a uh, adjustable distributor. Um, checking the timing on older trucks and such, very important. Ring clip pliers, uh, this one's this is a good set. You can change out the, the heads on those. Uh, usually the, the other attachments are in here. Uh, goes in an outward direction for opening. And you can turn it here. Oh, oh used to be able to turn it. been a while. Oh, I don't think they're going to cooperate with me. Obviously, it's been a long time since I used them. There we go. And then they go in. A good option here. I don't know, I think they're like 15, 20 bucks, but that's a nice one to have. Micrometer. Micrometer is important. For checking uh, brake caliper thicknesses, which you shouldn't be turning rotors anyway. Uh, check on the size of pins, bolts, things, uh, you know, you name it. I don't use this very often. There's not a lot of need for these anymore. Uh, just depends on what you're doing, but it's nice to have when you need it. Uh, throw some extra rags in here. Try to keep some moisture out of here. And this top section of mess tire pressure gauge, some super glue, feeler gauges, they're not getting too bad, as long as you can still read them, clean them off, you're fine, JB Weld, I haven't used this set in a long time, because I use the epoxy now, um, Schrader valve screwdriver, I think I've used it for everything except for a Schrader valve, uh, terminal cleaner for battery posts got to have one of those. Here's that tool I was talking about for the uh, for the brake calipers. Uh, I've actually had to grind this down in order to use it. Um, they make a different size. They make a, a whole box set of them. There's some brake calipers that have three pins. Uh, just depends on what you have. Uh, that one doesn't take up much room. It's good to have. Angle gauge, you know, lighter, some electrical tape. Tape measure, definitely have to have a tape measure with you, and a couple of mirrors. Um, 
I'll use a mirror on a daily basis. These smaller dental mirrors are good for getting in to check the brake thickness, brake pad thickness. Uh, picks. You want to have a good set of picks. These are not a good set of picks, but I've been using them for a couple of years now. They're still working just fine. Uh, although it is time to replace these for sure. Files, the screwdrivers I've talked about, the solder for the soldering iron, some paint markers. Definitely comes in handy. Have a couple of different colors, permanent markers, just some miscellaneous little things. I got some spark plug gapping tool here. I got three of them apparently. Uh, I keep thinking I'm losing them, but there they all are. And uh, some miscellaneous here. I think I got some roll pins, some Schrader valves, different sets, different sizes of roll pins. A lot of things don't use roll pins anymore, but I had a distributor that was spinning by itself and uh, apparently down inside the distributor it snapped off one of the roll pins, so uh, I went and bought a set of roll pins there, put it back together. She's been running ever since. So there you go. That's what I got in my main box on this side. This is the things that I use every day. Um, you know, I got a jack in the other side. We're going to go over that here if the daylight holds out for me. And uh, if not, I'll finish this video up tomorrow. Alright, it looks like I'll probably have enough time to finish this video up. So, I'm going to go through the second side of my truck here. Uh, I'm going to start here. Put this all back. So, this is what it looks like here. And what I got in here is... Sandpaper and a uh, fuel pressure tester, oil pressure tester. Sandpaper, some extras, extra compression tester, and all the fittings that I may or may not need for oil pressure testing, fuel testing, etc. And uh, a set of five point sockets. These I needed for a BMW fuel pump. Another one of those. Needed it once, never going to use it again, but since it doesn't take up that much space, I'll just leave it here. Some absorbent material for oil spills. A Dremel. A borescope camera. And a tie-down strap, just because... The rest of them are tied up back here, and I just wanted easy access to one. I don't carry a lot of stuff on the truck, but just in case. Buried down in here, I have a one and a half ton jack. I don't like to work on something too large, but that's enough for what I need. And a couple of jack stands. Uh, a vehicle fell on one of my buddies and broke his back in about seven places. Um, so I really try to use the jack stands as much as possible. Especially with these jacks, you know, Harbor Freight, I got mine at O'Reilly, I believe, but if that piston gives out at any time, it's going to crush whatever's underneath it. It's probably going to be your leg, because you're working on brakes. So, always use a jack stand. Tap and die set. Um, I'm not going to open that, but it's, it's tore up pretty good. Uh, I've used it a few times. It saves you when you need it. Clean out some threadings, whatnot. Uh, just good to have. This guy right here. This one's important. Radiator testing kit, pressure test kit. Uh, especially in the, the beginning of the summer and towards the winter. Uh, definitely good to have. Uh, this one's got quite a, a variety of, of adapters for different situations. And if that don't work, pretty much a catch-all different size plugs. You can check the temperature too. It's pretty apparent where leaks are coming from once you've been doing it for this long, but you know, if the radiator tank's starting to leak or whatnot, that gives the customer a visualization and it really helps out. My drill set. It's a Bauer, but it works. A couple of batteries, whole slew of broken drill bits, Stepper bits, surfacing pads for cleaning up, gaskets, water pumps, you have it. I don't use wire brushes that often, but it's nice to have. 
and I can charge it in the truck with the uh, inverter. In about an hour, I can just shove everything in the engine compartment, let it charge. Vacuum related materials. Uh, vacuum pump, uh, that's for turning on EGR valves and testing for leaks if you have any. Some different assortments, uh, uh, elbows and such. Uh, I try to keep uh, a good variety of hoses, um, you know, but this isn't quite large enough of a box for that. Uh, heater hose connectors and things like that, good assortment of hose clamps is important. Um, it, it'd be nice to keep a couple of different sized freeze plugs, because, you know, usually on the old Chevys and whatnot, the freeze plugs will uh, get corroded, rust out, so you got to pop one out. You know, uh, it's, a, it's a fairly permanent fix. Um, a lot of people say not to use these. Uh, the ones that I've put in years ago, still not leaking. So, don't let them tell you what to do if you know it's going to work. Electrical section. I have too many different variants of wires, but uh, just depends on what you're doing. I don't have enough different gauges, but I had a couple of wiring projects I was doing in the truck. I think that's why I ended up with so much. Uh, a couple assortments of solder. Um, really only use the rosin solder. Uh, not even this stuff. Um, all I'm really ever doing is electrical. Uh, I have an extra fuel pump. You should have an extra fuel pump of some sort. It'll help you in diagnosing. Um, for some reason I have some lights for uh, some hal uh, not halogen, Xenarc bulbs for a uh, Chrysler 300, don't know why. You need an assortment of lights, 1157s, uh, 3157s, 1156, um, different colors if you can. You have the orange ones, an assortment of orange, some dome lights, fuses are important have a nice assortment of fuses. Again, it's been a while since I've been in here, so I think I'm lacking on organization in here and what I really need. You know, some, some ring ring terminals, spade terminals. I think I've used up all the spade terminals, but butt splice connectors are very important when you need to fix uh, a rat chewing on an injector wire. Something to have. Uh, different sized relays. You can go to the junkyard, grab a handful of these guys instead of paying $12 a piece for them. Pennies on the dollar. Uh, whole sorts of different kinds of relays. GMs, BMWs. The expensive ones are the Volkswagens. Uh, definitely want to get your hands on a, a bunch of different Volkswagen relays. Uh, maxi fuses. So get some, get some regular fuses, get some micro fuses and get some maxi fuses. The main fuse uh, on the alternator, some 20s, some 120s. Doesn't take up a whole lot of room, it's good to have. Uh, batteries, I got batteries everywhere, but that's for my equipment, so. Uh, random hardware here. Side post connectors and things like that, I have no idea. I gotta go through this stuff and clean it. Yet again, uh, one good thing to have, which I actually haven't used yet, is a, uh, a remote starter wire. This allows you to operate the starter, uh, turn over the motor so that you can set the timing um, for diagnosing. Uh, it's good to have a remote button like that. It's a high amperage button. Uh, don't use it that often, but again, there'll be that one time. And the hardware. Mm. This is a complete mess. Uh, this is random things that I keep. S spring assortments from drum brakes. Uh, uh, valve spring compression tool for doing uh, valve replacement on heads. Starter shims for Fords and Chevys. I got an extra lug nut, I don't know. You know, it's just acquire things over time. One of each size of exhaust clamps. Dust caps, front seals, exhaust gaskets. Now here's something you might want to get. An assortment of body panel clips. 
and these little bushings here for uh, windshield wiper linkage. Saves you a trip to the store. It's just something simple. Uh, plastic tank and radiator repair kit. I honestly don't think that's going to work. I just put a radiator in it. And a fiberglass resin repair kit. I got it for like two bucks, so why not? Exhaust hanger and a bunch of O-rings, thermostat gaskets, throttle body gaskets. Just random hardware. I go through here when I can't find something. Usually I still don't have it. Got a vacuum cleaner. Run that off the inverter. Vacuum cleaner is good for cleaning uh, rat poop and debris around intake manifolds when you're doing an intake gasket. Uh, pretty much about it. Uh, a gallon of fresh water, a gallon of universal coolant. Even though it is not universal, I believe this one is a, a HO8. No, it's, I think it's an OAT. Um, you can use this if you flush a system out. Don't let it uh, fool you that it says universal. Uh, I believe this one's an OAT and it doesn't mix well with IATs or HOATs. Um, but it does mix with a lot of different colors and so far I haven't had a problem with it. I wouldn't hesitate to use it, but still not the proper fix. Got three kits over here. I got a quick connector compression tester. I've had to buy a new one recently. Uh, always test it on a known good compression. Uh, your engine on your car. Uh, if, especially if there's any questions about it. Uh, this is the one that I used on the Kia Rio. And after pulling the head off that Kia Rio, I believe that it's working just fine. Uh, fuel injection tester for checking the fuel rail pressure. Uh, the other gauge in that box there is for low pressure. Uh, this will be for the, the ones that you can get to the adapters, the Schrader valve and whatnot. Um, or you can use one of these connectors to hook it up to a, a standard low pressure connection. And the last thing in this section is a steering wheel puller, which is good for pulling all sorts of pulleys. And a lot of these bolts can be used for pulling drum brakes off when the drum brakes get stuck on there because they're lift over. Uh, you can use these bolts to push the, the drum off. So that's good for steering wheels, uh, pulleys. Some water pump pulleys, just depends on what you're working on, but this is a good set to have. So there you have it for this section of the truck. And we've got one more, that's the back. Should go quickly. Because there ain't a whole lot of good stuff back there. All right, well, if this looks like a mess, that's because it is. Uh, I usually have a five gallon bucket here for miscellaneous parts, and a five gallon bucket over here for oil. I had an oil pan, but it kept dripping out the back of the truck and getting sick of leaving a trail everywhere. The truck leaks enough oil as it is out the front. So uh, this is the head from the Kia Rio. I gotta return that, not a big deal. What we got here, this huge mess going on here. Um, this is it. This here. I had to use this. I can't remember on what. I think it was a 300 ZX uh, Helicoil kit. Um, pretty specific to each size, but may need it again sometime. Uh, some Caro Pack gasket maker. I got some Cork gasket maker. Uh, the jump box. Pick yourself up one of these, even on uh, Amazon. This has saved me more than enough times. It's about a hundred bucks. Um, I use it a couple of times a week. Just keep it charged up and uh, definitely saves the day. A cheap air compressor. You're gonna need that after you plug that tire on the side of the freeway or if the tire didn't blow off the car yet. Uh, 
Some more cork gasket material. Oh, and this guy right here. This is a bunch of miscellaneous. Fuel line removal tools, cotter pins, Eclipse, and these, uh, I forget the name brand, Xeon. These are for removing stripped bolts. They got some teeth in there. I keep those back here because I don't use them very often. Uh, some crow's feet, some flare end crow's feet. Uh, again, don't use them very often, but if you got a, a broken brake line or something that's starting to strip on you, you got that as an option or vice grips. So. If you use vice grips, chances are you're going to have to replace the line anyway. Do it right. An extension cord for running the tools that are in here. And a step ladder, a step stool for getting in the big trucks. I don't like working on big rigs, but if you have to, it's available. Over here is some, I believe it's Honda, Honda CRV cab and rotors and stuff like that. But more importantly, that's because I don't have my five gallon bucket in here. So, at fuel pump, I was gonna tear the fuel pump apart, see, show you guys how the inside of that works. Some extra fluids. We got this is weed eater wire this is for cleaning out tubes in sunroof drains Let's get the debris out sometimes that works tow strap I pulled a couple of cars off the freeway even with this tiny little truck a real set of jumper cables when that box is dead or when you just need more amperage, sometimes you got to jump a vehicle two sources because they got a really bad battery, uh, which is going to kill the alternator soon, but it's good to have an option. Uh, spray adhesive, interior panels, miscellaneous things, K&N filter cleaner. I don't like K&N filters myself, um, especially if you put the oil back on, because most of the time what it does it just contaminates the mass airflow sensor and just causes you more problems down the road. Grease gun. Again, big trucks. Uh, injecting in some bearings on bearing buddies, trailers, things like that. Uh, it's good to have. Hacksaw. Don't need that very often. Got a sawzall, but tight places might need it. Air conditioning black light for the oil UV dye for checking for oil leaks uh, again been doing this so long really don't need to use a black light to find an oil leak pretty much find it um, and air conditioning manifold set uh, recharge a lot of AC systems at the beginning of the summer over to this side we got a nice assortment of funnels Long funnel, small funnel, wide funnels, uh, catch can for brake fluid when you're flushing a brake system. And this dirty funnel here is for the radiators. You want to keep the water level up above the heater core. Different assortments. I got this off of Amazon for I believe like 20 bucks. Lost a couple of the assortments, attachments, but what are you going to do? Uh, and then the, the miscellaneous fluids I don't use very often. Copper spray gasket. You want to replace the gaskets, not fix them. Some transmission slip. Brake squeal. That brake squeal treatment. You know, if your brakes are squealing, you did something wrong, just redo the brakes. Battery terminal cleaner. That's good, but that'll just clean up the mess that's already there. Replace the battery, please. ATF. Use the ATF for power steering fluid. Some more of that German power steering fluid right there. I got a gallon of oil. Uh, a lot of no start situations. A lot of chain rattle diagnosis on uh, like Kias and Hondas. Uh, when they start up, the rattle for a couple of seconds. You got a bad tensioner, or or you just don't have enough oil oil pressure. 
Uh, if you need to, you know you're doing an oil change, just got some cheap 1540 diesel oil. I run that in the truck here. Um, I leak a little bit of oil, but I've been running this stuff for, got 80,000 miles now and I have no issues. A gallon of gasoline, which is apparently empty. Uh, you wanna keep at least a gallon of gasoline with you, if not for your own safety, for helping somebody off the side of the freeway. Uh, there's been a lot of situations where the gas gauge reads a quarter, and you know, after deliberating for a while, you just come to the realization that the gas gauge is bad, and put in a gallon or two of gas, and off it goes. So that's what we got back here. That's what I got in here. Half inch impact gun. Uh, don't use that too often. They really just don't put out enough torque to do anything unless you buy a real quality one. Uh, four inch grinder. That's going to save you a lot. And uh, sawzall. They get a nice assortment of blades for the sawzall. I use the sawzall and the grinder quite a bit. I also have a uh, small welder. Uh, that you saw in the Mini Cooper video, but I don't keep it in here. I don't use it enough. Uh, just keep it at the house and, you know, just bring it out when you know that you're going to need to use it for a job like that. It doesn't run off the inverter anyway. Uh, the, uh, the inverter only puts out 8 amps, and uh, I believe the welder needs a solid 20 amp circuit, so that's it. That's what we got in the truck, and that's quite a lot of equipment. Um, in the console, I have a head gasket tester, the chemical tester for head gaskets. Uh, the little, the little vial there, uh, the blue fluid that turns yellow if the if the exhaust gases are present. And uh, the scanner I use, I have an auto ingenuity scanner for scanning computer systems. It's factory. It's factory. Uh, equivalent. Uh, it reads all of the systems on board. Uh, it reads the stereo system, the, the yaw, uh, door panel modules, or door modules, uh, you know, every, everything. Seat modules. Uh, uh, some cars have 20 computers. I've ran into cars that have 85 computers on board. Uh, it'll read every single one. It's got bi-directional controls. And, you know, you can turn the windshield wipers on, activate the horn, activate the left turn signal. Uh, saves you a lot of time getting in and out of the car and diagnosing. Um, so getting a good scanner, Solus. Um, now the good, the, the OBD2 scanners, the O'Reilly's ones for $100, $150, they're good for just reading codes, clearing codes, um, swapping coils, doing a diagnosis and things like that. But when you really got to get into it, uh, something that, that the scanners won't touch. Um, save, them a, save them a trip to the dealer. You can scan it, come up with a comprehensive diagnosis, uh, or uh, you can go in and look at sensor values that the regular scanners won't have in live data and uh, you know get more information towards diagnosis. Uh, yeah, that's about it. That's what I got. This is what I got to work with. This is a rolling toolbox. Uh, my hangout spot, my lunch bench. So, I'll see you in the next video, you guys. Thanks for watching.